All right, my friend, it is the last reading wrap up of the year. Can you believe it? I can't either. It's crazy. This is probably being posted in January, but you know what I'm saying anyway. <laughs> it's the December reading wrap up. This is it, man. I can't believe we're here. And I can't believe we did 120. We did 120 bucks for the year. And it was a great read. I love ending on a great note. So uh, I feel good about that. And I'm ready to share the usual with you, which I'm going to keep the same pattern that we've done all year, which is where in my reading wrap ups, I break it up into three categories of the books that I read for the month. So there's the best of the best books I totally recommend and think are worth your time and money. Then there's the borrow it books, books that I thought were good fun and they were okay, but they weren't amazing. So maybe you should get them on sale or just borrow them. And then lastly, we have the skip it books, books that I do not think are worth your time or your money. So without further ado, without further introduction, let's just get into this thing. The book that got me to my 120 goal was actually my favorite of the month, and it was The Wolf Once In by Laura McHugh. This is a rural noir, and I will definitely be reading more by this author and more of this genre, because I've discovered that I just really enjoy it. It speaks to me. This is a dual narrative book. We have one woman who is middle-aged, she has a child, she is divorced, and she is living again in her hometown where she grew up. Unfortunately, her brother just passed away under what she feels is mysterious circumstances, but which the law enforcement does not have the time or the energy or the interest in looking further into. Our other main character is a younger girl. She's a teen. She's looking to escape this small town rural life and just get as far away from all of the reputation that her family holds as possible and basically just gain her freedom by escaping into these places she dreams of traveling. She has a connection to our other character's brother and what we're doing is basically going back and forth from perspectives and time lines until everything knits together. I supremely enjoyed Laura's writing. I thought it was just so fantastically done. I really recommend it to anyone who likes darker character-driven books. This has been compared to Gillian Flynn, and I do really see that connection. Lots of times those connections don't make any sense to me, and I think, what are you even talking about? But this is one that does make sense. It's not as... Um, not that particular flavor of darkness as Gillian Flynn, but I can kind of see where they're what they're going at, where it's more character driven, it is darker, it's not really a thriller, but somehow it is thrilling. And I think that a lot of people would really enjoy this. I didn't want it to end, I just kinda I would have been happy reading it for, you know, another 250 pages. So great book. I had a feeling I would like this when it came in, but I put it off forever, who knows why. I think it released in August. I definitely recommend this one and I'll probably be looking for more of her work. So yeah, I'll keep you posted, but this is a great one. Great one and a great one to end the year on. Next on my buy it list is a Lisa Jewell novel that I read on audiobook. It is new this year and it is called The Family Upstairs. I just recently got hooked into Lisa Jewell when I read Then She Was Gone. I thought it was so fun and so good, like exactly what I'm looking for in a mystery thriller. So I'm like on a mission to read as much of her work as I can because it's one of those new mystery thriller authors for me that I know is so stylistically consistent and it's going to be what I want it to be every time I open up one of her books. This one is much more of a slower burn sort of mystery. It has all the elements of Lisa Jewell that I really like. It's interesting character dynamics, things you don't see coming, things you do see coming so you're satisfied but also surprised. It's a really nice combination. There's uh, you know, a mysterious old house, a cult, weird family relationships. And I never like to say too much about mystery thrillers because I think it's so easy to ruin them for people, but I just want you to know I had fun with it. I really like Lisa Jewell. And if you haven't read her before, totally check out Then She Was Gone. And then maybe this one if you're in the mood, but it is slower. It is a slower burn than her previous books, but I really liked it. And by the way, I read it on audiobook, super confusing because there are time like different timelines and the audiobook for some inexplicable reason does not state at the beginning of a new chapter you know this is from the 1980s and this is modern day it doesn't say that at all so on audiobook it was super confusing and i only figured it out after messaging another reviewer that we were both missing something and she had a physical copy and checked so just fair warning get the paper version and don't do the audiobook Last on my buy it list is good old Nancy Drew. This is Nancy Drew number seven. I did not read Nancy Drew as a child. What a bummer that is, but I'm having the most fun slowly reading them as an adult. This one is The Clue in the Diary, and I thought it was just classic Nancy Drew. I had so much fun with it, and I really recommend it. Not just this book, but just Nancy Drew in general. She is perfection. She's what I strive to be, and I just... 
have so much fun reading her little mystery stories. This one is typical of the early era where usually someone needs money and there's some sort of uh, unfair crime going on that's taking advantage of people who really need help and Nancy naturally comes in, solves the mystery, saves the day, it's all good fun. It's almost Scooby-Doo-esque in a way, uh, this one and another one that I'll bring up in my Barrowit section. People forget about classics like these and I think they should honestly reprint them. I think they've just reprinted the first eight, which is these editions that I have, but I think they should just keep going. Like it shouldn't be so hard to find a Nancy Drew novel. They're so fun. That's it for my buy it list. Now let's move on to the borrow it section, which is quite lengthy. First up is this Tender Land. This is a rural fiction, a genre I've really enjoyed seeing a resurgence in over the past couple of years with books like Before We Were Yours and Where the Crawdads Sing. I really enjoy this genre, this type of stylistic writing and the region it represents. This is almost like Huck Finn reimagined. It's set in the 1930s and we're going on an odyssey with these four orphans and the people they meet on their journey to where they're trying to go, where they think they're going, um, and how all these different people impact not just their journey, but their character and their personalities and their growth as young adults. At first I was really enjoying this and I thought for sure it was going to be a four star read, but as it went on I kind of felt that some of the attitudes were modernized. These 1930s perspectives, which is where it's set and supposed to be, was kind of a I thought had put modern ideals on it, which frustrated me because I'm, I guess, I don't want to say a purist, but I just prefer that when you're writing from that perspective, you think about what people might have really thought uh, or how they would have perceived certain actions as opposed to what we perceive today. Aside from that, I also thought it could have been thematically stronger. It was almost really well done, but then it kind of like went back and forth and I just think it would have been stronger if it had been more consistent all the way through. So still a good book, and if you really like that genre, it's probably gonna be a good one for you, but I just don't think it's like worth full price money, or I don't wanna like say it's like fantastic, because it wasn't, but it was fun and it was good. Typical Borrow It book. Next up on the Borrow It list is The Passengers by John Mars. John Mars has a sort of Black Mirror style writing that will take the modern technology we have and he'll twist it or he'll really think about it in a sci-fi way of all the negatives that it might have on our society as a whole. Really fascinating stuff. I love that. This one is about modernized cars that are self-driving and he's tackling this from a lot of different ways about how the technology might uh, appear in a fictional but possibly realistic world that we all might encounter one day. In this novel, eight people get into these self-driving cars and then they are told that they are going to die in two and a half hours and that the public will be deciding who lives or who is saved. All of their reactions are live streamed and we're kind of barreling towards the end of this two hour time limit. I personally think this would have made a fantastic short story, but it's a bit of a stretch as a novel. I think the 400 page mark is just too long for this story concept. I was truly ready for it to be over at the end. I think my friend Darcia Hell put it perfectly. She is a really great reviewer and an author actually, so you should totally check her out on Instagram if you want or just on Amazon where she is like a top 100 reviewer. It's crazy. Um, she said it was kind of like watching a cop chase a runaway car where it sounds fun in theory, but then you're just sort of watching it and you feel like, man, this is going on for a long time and you want it to be over. And that's kind of exactly how I felt about this book. So many aspects of it I liked. Some of the character aspects I really liked. I just thought it was too long and maybe the concept too small and grand at the same time for a full novel. So it was fine. It was fun, but I don't really recommend it when there are so many great comparable books out there. Next on the list is an indie published Archibald Finch and the Lost Witches. This was sent to me forever ago and it was one of the books I really wanted to finish by the end of the year. It was one I did not mean to stop reading in the middle, but it just sort of happened. So I picked it up again and I have to say that this book has so much promise. It is a children's magic fantasy world, which is so hard to break into because it's such a saturated market and so many great books have come before it. I've got to hand it to the author because I do think that this book has carved out a place for itself while kind of giving a nod to those that have come before it. So it's a really tricky balance and I do think they achieved that. It was a really fun world, lots of fun little tidbits, fun characters, but I couldn't give it a four star rating just because I think that there is some fine tuning that needs to be done and I do think there's a book two coming out. So I think it would really benefit from a fantastic editor who was just good at line by line and could 
just approach some of the sentence structure and the grammar in a different way that would make it more competitive in such a competitive market, if that makes sense. But that's my marketing nerdy side coming into this. But I just want to say it was really fun. I think it'd be a really good middle reader book if you have someone in your life who really enjoys that sort of YA middle reader fantasy. Next on my borrow it list is a Nancy Drew. It's Nancy Drew number six, The Secret of Red Gate Farm. One of my Nancy Drew pals, which I do not have enough of, by the way. So one of my uh, pals on Instagram who also loves Nancy Drew messaged me when I first started reading this and said, I never got this one. It always seemed so confusing to me. And I totally see your point now that I've read it. This is the book my husband and I chose as part of our tradition. Every year in December, we read a book aloud to each other as part of our holiday celebration in our tradition. I love doing it. It's so much fun and I highly recommend that you try it next year or any month of the year if you want. Read a book aloud as a family. It's so fun and engaging and bonding in a way great fun. This was my husband's first Nancy Drew, and I wish we had chosen a different one, but it was fine. It was a little out of consistency or a little out of character for the Nancy Drew ones. It had way more uh, description than usual and way more little plot points, but so much so that I can see how my friend got confused and never really knew what was going on. So not the strongest Nancy Drew, but if you're a fan like me, like I don't really care, I'm just happy to read it, but it does have to go in the borrow it section. Next up on the borrow it list is a classic that I read on Kindle, Ivanhoe, and it almost killed me. It took me so long to read this. It was so painful at times. At times I liked it. At times I just wanted it to be over. And I guess for classics, my meter is would I read it again? And the answer is no. Probably not. I wouldn't. I get the appeal. I did learn a lot about that time in history, which is fun in itself, but uh, it was just challenging for me writing style wise. I did learn a lot of new vocabulary words, so that was good, but uh, I just think it's just not the classic for me, but I'm glad I read it still. I'm glad I checked it off the list. Last on the borrow it list, and it's really only a borrow it because it is so irrelevant for probably 99.9% .9 of people, is this vintage obscure book that I finished the year off with. It is The Virginia Tradition by Marshall Fishwick. This is something I got because I was born and raised in Virginia and still live there now, and I just thought it would be fun, especially because I've lived in three different regions of Virginia. I've lived in Northern Virginia, where we are now, which is way more liberal and just a totally different mindset, more of like a northern mindset. I've lived in the coastal region, which is unique and kind of like Old South in a way, but also in a different way. And I've also was raised in the Shenandoah Valley, the mountains of Virginia, which is just a whole other thing in and of itself. And I've always loved Virginia in the sense that it's a state with a bunch of states in it. Like each region is its own thing, its own perspective. So I thought it would be enjoyable for me personally to read this. And it was, and I had a lot of fun with it. He talked a lot about the history of Virginia, how things were set up, how things fell apart and were built back up again, some of the cultural aspects. And while I didn't think he was spot on on everything and I didn't believe everything he had to say, it was still really fun and enjoyable for me as a Virginian. So I get that this doesn't really mean anything to most people, but I'm still glad that I read it, still glad that I picked it up. And I am gonna keep it on my shelves for probably forever just cause it's so random. And I don't know, I just like to have that little bit of my own local history on the shelves. That is it for the borrow it section. So now if you're still around, let's get into the skip it section, which I have two books for, one which was on the verge of borrow it and skip it, and one which I think is just complete trash. So let's get into it. The one that was on the edge of borrowing or skip it for me was Zach George's Dog Training Revolution. Obviously I got this book because I just think you can learn anything you want to from a book pretty much. And we just got a dog, as you might remember, and I wanted to obviously read up because I'm a nerd. I like to be prepared. So I was reading his training tips and his philosophies. And while I think this book is a good representation of his brand and like a good introduction to his brand, I don't think it really stands on its own as a like how to for training. There's a few actionable things in there, but it's mostly uh, just about his philosophies, which is fun to read if you're a fan of his, but not so great if you're just looking for the resources, if that makes sense. So it was okay. Uh, it didn't have any major complaints other than I, I don't like it when books, especially nonfiction, are more of like a marketing device than a standalone service. So especially because books are a product and they are pricey. So I don't think it's worth the money. Maybe if you're at the library, you can browse through it, but I'm sure there are better dog training books out there if you ever need that. Last on my 
list for the month and last on my skip it list is Tom Brokaw's The Fall of Richard Nixon, a reporter remembers Watergate. So what I knew about Watergate, I could probably tell you in two sentences. I mean, I didn't really know anything, but I love history and I've loved exploring history through reading nonfiction this year. And when I read that title and I read the description, I thought, great, like I can learn about Watergate in that era, that moment in time. And what better way to read about it than from a reporter who lived it and reported on it as it was happening. So I thought it was going to be one thing and it ended up being, in my opinion, a complete waste of a book. I don't think it's worth the paper it's printed on. Another reviewer said that Tom Brokaw was hesitant to write this. And I do wonder if, like, I don't know, it's kind of like an opportunity just to sell for his for the name and just because of the political climate, which just annoys me because in my mind, when I'm reading something about history, I want to be reading about history. And I don't, you know, I'm not looking for modern political stuff thrown in a book that's supposed to be about remembering Watergate. So what this book really is, is I kid you not, 80% name dropping. I'm not joking. Okay, it's mostly him recollecting about dinner parties he went to, fancy events he went to, but he's not talking really about the events. He talks about the menu and then he name drops people he met or knew and how great they were, but he's never really talking about like Nixon or Watergate much at all. Um, you can probably learn more about Watergate from the last chapter of this book than the entire book in itself. So I just don't really understand what the point of publishing this was. It doesn't add anything. It doesn't say anything. I don't get it, man. I just really don't get it. Books like this annoy the hell out of me because like when you work with authors <laughs> and writers, you get to see so many fantastic books that are just completely passed over. So it annoys me that just like for his name and his history, like this was published when there are like a bazillion better books out there that could have had that spot in the market. I don't know. It just annoys me a little bit. So I, d I definitely didn't think it was worth it at all. So if you want to learn about Nixon, don't read it because you're not going to learn anything. If you wanted to learn about a reporter's time in that era, then skip it because you're not going to learn anything. Once I realized it wasn't actually about Nixon, I tried to look at it from a different way and say, OK, well, even if I'm looking at this just as a reporter's memories of that time, maybe I can still enjoy it. But it's not even really about anything. So I don't really know what to say except, you know, for your own sanity, and your own time and your own money, don't read it because it's just not worth it. Not worth it at all. And that is it. That is the complete end of the year. The last one, the last reading wrap up. We have gone through a lot together this year, haven't we? What a roller coaster. We have read some great books this year. I do plan on making a best of the year video or two, so keep an eye out for that. I was glad to end this year. My last book of the year and my last my 120 book was The Wolf Once In by Laura McHugh, which I thought was so great. And I loved ending it on such a positive book. Well, the book was depressing, but on such a great reading experience. So I'm really grateful for that. Really grateful for you guys and for letting me share the reading year with you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being nerds with me. I appreciate you. If you liked this video, give it a quick thumbs up, drop a comment below, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.